Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. All righty, guys. It's Brandon from Fly Fish Food coming at you from the shop here in Orem. We're going to come at you with another streamer video. We're going to be tying the Silent Bob. It's a little sculpin pattern I've been uh, messing around with for a few, uh, about a year now. And it's uh, been super, super effective. Uh, been working great for us. So in the vise, tying on a mongoose for the first time. We'll see how it goes. It's a pretty good looking vise. Holds the hook really, really well. So we'll give her a shot. Um, we have a Gammy uh, B10S in a size one. And for thread, I'm gonna be using some Viva's GSP and 150 denier. So we'll just start about halfway on the hook there. Work our way back. And to start off this pattern, we're gonna start with the, uh, we're tying in a little bit of articulation. This is gonna be belly scratcher weighted. Um, basically an awesome, awesome way to invert your hooks on a lot of different streamer patterns. So we'll go ahead and get this guy tied in. And I'm gonna leave a little bit out the front like that. And then trim a little bit excess off there. Fold this back on itself and tie it down. I like to put a little bit of a fly tire Z-Mint in between all the steps here just to keep these beads from coming off when they go plaque against a rock, you know. So a little bit of glue there. All right, and then we're gonna make a dubbing loop. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make the pearl belly that most sculpin have. So for that, we're gonna use a little bit of ice dub and UV pearl. And then I'm gonna use my little Stompo combo tool to brush this out. Cool. So then we'll go ahead and Use the rotary on this guy to get a couple wraps in there. Tie that off. Snip out the excess thread. Okay, and with the combo tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush everything. So this is gonna ride hook point up, so I'm gonna push, brush everything towards the hook point to kind of make room for a couple of beads in there. And this pattern, because it's gonna have a deer hair head on it, it's kind of buoyant, so I like to tie this really heavy, and the cool thing is when you strip this, it kind of flutters away from the bottom and seems to trigger a lot of reaction strikes. So I got some 4.6 millimeter beads. These are tungsten. And for a size one, I find kind of two to be kind of a good spot there. You can go with three if you wanted to. Um, but that seems to be pretty good. And then the further up you can move these, the better. And see how they still want to wiggle, so we'll just pull that tight. Okay, pull over the little bit of extra there and double it over. I know a lot of people say you don't need to double it over, but I noticed a uh, I notice it seems to last a little bit longer when it's doubled over. And again with the glue, we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with some glue there. Okay, now that we have that, we can kind of brush that pearl stuff around it a little bit. And then what I like to do is I'll actually take one more pinch of the UV Pearl Ice Dub. And then I will kind of make a veil over those beads. Probably not necessary, but why not, right? Okay, so now we have a, just a little bit of a pearl belly action going on. Next, I'm gonna go and take a piece of Magnum uh, Rabbit Zonker. This is the Barn, bra, excuse me, brown barred olive. 
Uh, I've already cut a little taper in it. I like to taper the magnum strips. And for length on this, if you hold it from the skin, I find that if you go an entire hook length and skin, and then another half, that seems to be pretty much the sweet spot for length for this bug for me. Alrighty, and go ahead and measure this up. Pop that through. Okay, so now we're gonna pull this up to the tie-in point. I'm gonna kind of wrap that around the top of the hook. A couple loose wraps just to make sure it's lined up and then I'll cinch that down. Okay, so we got our tail in now. I'm just gonna moisten that to kind of get it out of the way for a second. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the gill pack. Um, I'm all about the gill pack. Whether or not it's super effective, I don't know, but um, it makes for a cool looking fly for sure. So I'm gonna make another dubbing loop. And for the gill pack material, what I use is red ice dub. And then I also take some Senyo's Predator Wrap. And I cut that to, I would say, probably about an inch in length. And that's what I use for this. So if I pick up, I have some that I've pre-cut already. So you can kind of see there's the ice dub there and then the predator wraps on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that and I'm gonna put it in the loop. Spread that out. Let's go ahead and pinch and create our dubbing loop. And then we're gonna brush this out, make sure all that Senyo Predator's wrap is not bound up. Some of it might be, but it's going to be just fine. Um, and the reason I use the Senyo Predator Wrap is it does a kind of good job of maintaining bulk in the water, so it keeps this, this gill pack nice and wide. And then I'll go ahead and kind of preen this, so almost to make a hackle. And then I'll start to palmer this. Cut out our extra there, then I'm going to kind of shove everything back and wrap over that. Cool, and now I'll take our Stompful brush and just kind of get in there and brush that all out. And whatever extra you have, that's fine. If you have some that are a little too squirrely, you can always just kind of come in here and Trim them out. Or not, whatever. And I kind of like this stuff to kind of bleed into it like that. Like, I don't see any problem with that. If uh, you feel like that's a problem, you can probably trim some of that up a little bit. But that's the way I like this guy. All right. So next, we're going to go ahead and get some uh, Primo Deer Strip. Um, this is an olive one. This deer hair is... Awesome stuff. It's um, if you don't have a few of these Primo strips and you like to tie deer hair streamers, pick a few up. They're awesome to work with. Um, I switched from belly hair to that just because I, I like the way it looks. It looks a little bit cleaner. So I've already pre-cut and stacked uh, a clump of deer hair in the Peak Stacker hair. Awesome stacker if you're looking for a, a guy to handle some nice big clumps of hair to do these streamers with. I'm gonna try to make a collar that goes right about to where that hook barb is. You could even go to the hook point if you wanted. So what I'm gonna do, sorry, I'm probably gonna be all fingers here for a second. Is I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy, do a collecting wrap, one more collecting wrap, and then cinch. Then I'll kind of just take my thread and work it through that hair a couple times just to lock everything in place. Then I'll take a hair packer here. Then I'm going to work my thread through to the hook eye. and do a couple wraps there. Put 
pushing everything back a little bit. And I'm going to get one more little clump in there. This one I don't have to worry about stacking it because I'm not building a collar. And it doesn't have to be quite as big. But I always like to cut out a little bit extra because when you clean it, if you clean it well, you know, we're going to lose some hair. So always start with more hair than you think you're going to need. Okay, so I'm going to take that to the hook point, kind of at a 45. Capture it. And then start to kind of spin that in there a little bit. Oops. If it gets a little wonky on you, it's fine. Couple wraps on the hook point to kind of lock everything in. On the hook, I mean. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get a few half hitches on there. So I've discovered I have a hard time whip finishing on these guys, so I just kinda get a couple whip finishes in there. And then I'll just glue that. Okay, got a couple whip finishes in there. Brush that out. And then before I forget, I just take a little bit of the Loon water-based head cement and I just throw a shot in there on those half edges. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and get a double-edged razor blade. And we're gonna start to trim this head and we're gonna do a wedge head on this guy. And I'm going to start on the bottom, and I'm just going to kind of go ahead and get a big portion of that cut. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that, and then I'm going to do this side at an upward angle towards the hook point. And I just do kind of big cuts to start. And then I'll start to shape it a little bit more once I get kind of the general shape there. Getting close there. And I don't want this quite as flat as some of the other wedge heads you see. I still want it to have a little bit of a taller profile. That's about it right there. Get some of that hair out of the way there. Okay, so that's about the shape we're looking for there. You can kind of see that there. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish off the head. We're gonna put some glue and stuff on it and some eyes. I'm gonna use the fluorescent orange eyes from Hairline. The, there are they are pretty awesome. They come in a couple of colors. My two favorite right now are the orange and the yellow, but they look super, super cool. So I'm just going to grab one of these eyes and put a dab of glue on the back of it. And this is just to hold it in place because we're going to actually resin, put resin over this head too. So the glue is more temporary than anything.
So I'm just gonna use this bodkin to kind of move the eye where I want it. And you can kind of see that there. And that's a good gauge for how tall I want the head to be is the six millimeter eye. So once you tie a few of these, or as you're trimming it, you can basically put some eyes up to it and you know whether you have it about right because of the eyes will fit or not. Okay, so we got those guys on there. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take some UV thick and I'm just gonna coat the head, put a pretty nice layer on it, put some on the eyes there, put some underneath, and I'm basically gonna turn this head into a Rapala by just covering this whole bad boy with some resin. We're gonna grab a torch and just get those locked up. Then you can either use some hard as whole or anything like that, uh, some sort of lacquer on this, Sally Hansen's just to get it locked, but I have some flow here, so we'll go ahead and just use that because it does cure attack free. One more time with that light. You can see how well those eyes fluoresce. It's pretty sweet. Alrighty guys. So fun little streamer pattern. This guy he is nice and broad. Looks funny at you. He goes hard like Matthew the chicken. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. That was a dab in case you missed it.